In 1976, Lawrence Martin started to build the seven and a quarter inch gauge wayside light railway in the garden of his house near Maidstone in Kent. Initially, it was a very simple line running from the front to the back garden. Since then, it has grown into one of the most complex and interesting garden railways in the country. Early on a summer's morning, we find Wayside Light Railway number no. 4, Wild and Lady, being prepared for a day's work. Nearby, number 2, Susan Jane, is nearly ready, and there's just enough time to give the diesel a final polish. Sir Robert has been in steam for some time now, and he's already hard at work. As each locomotive comes off shed, they make their way with their train to Wayside Station. Finally, Wild and Lady is ready and moves off. Close behind Wild and Lady, Sir Robert has nearly completed the first circuit. <coughs> Meanwhile, the diesel starts the long climb up into the woods. Although based on a full-size narrow-gauge diesel, this locomotive is actually a petrol hydraulic. It was built especially for the Wayside Light Railway by Crowhurst Engineering in 1988. Back at Wayside Station, Sir Robert finally arrives. Wayside is the only terminus on the line and all journeys start and finish here. Wield and Lady, having just taken over the coaches that Sir Robert has brought in, now starts the outward journey. Sir Robert now makes his way back past the signal box towards the turntable. Once turned and watered, Sir Robert will then be ready to take over the next set of incoming coaches. Sir Robert was built in 1978 and is based upon Roger Marsh's popular Tinkerbell design.
another Tinkerbell based design is Susan Jane, also from 1978. To get a better idea of the complex layout of this line, let's join a train as it leaves the departure platform at Wayside. Once clear of the signal box, the line curves round to the right and enters a long tunnel. As well as being an interesting scenic feature, this tunnel provides useful dry storage for the coaching stock. Once out of the tunnel, the line starts a long steep climb up into the woods. On an intensively worked railway such as this, efficient and reliable signalling is necessary for safe operation. The Wayside Light Railway uses both the traditional semaphore and colour light type signals. In the woods, the colour lights provide the maximum visibility. Shortly after leaving the signal, our train crosses another bridge. Once over the bridge, we start on a downward spiral which will take us back under the bridge and onto the avoiding lines at Amesbury Junction. The avoiding lines bypass the station at Amesbury Junction and lead us instead up a steep climb into another circuit through the trees. Having reached the summit of this particular circuit, we now begin a rapid descent down into the station at Amesbury Junction.
we prepare to enter Amesbury Junction Station, Wilden Lady passes us on the adjacent avoiding line. Once clear of Amesbury Junction, we pass the locomotive sheds on the left and start to make our way towards Bluebell Hall. Bluebell Hall is the last stop before Wayside. On busy days, all passengers alight at Bluebell and trains run empty into Wayside to collect more passengers. This makes it easier to handle large crowds and avoids incoming trains full of passengers waiting at the signal between the tunnel and Wayside station. Emerging from the darkness of Sharp Bore Tunnel, we make our way round the left-hand curve, past the turntable and signal box, to finish our journey back at Wayside Station. As Susan Jane pulls slowly into the platform at Wayside, Let's go and have a look at trains in action on the main line during a busy summer's afternoon.
Soon, another successful day draws to a close. The last of the special trains departs from Wayside Station, and then, as darkness falls and the diesel makes its way slowly back to the loco shed, the Wayside Light Railway closes for the day.